Hi, I'm Kelly, Kelly J Jewelry, and today I'm doing this video from inside the dry dock. So all those strange sounds and everything that you hear are because the boat is out of the water and we are in the dock. So you'll hear lots of sounds, of boaty sounds, of works all being done. So I apologise in advance for the funny strange noises and this is why. Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly J Jewelry. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make this crescent moon pendant. I've put a list in the description below of everything you'll need to make this pendant. Also, there's a few links there to my Etsy shop and my Facebook page. So if you want to come over and share your finished work on there, that would be great. I'd love to see all your finished work. And if you're interested in my other PDF tutorials, you'll find all those in my Etsy shop. This pendant, you'll need 0.8mm wire, that's 20 gauge, and I've cut two lengths at 16 inches each, that's 41 centimetres. You need 0.315mm weaving wire, which is 28 gauge, and you'll need about 500 centimetres. I've wound mine onto a bobbin. You can cut lengths as you go if you prefer. I've put affiliate links below in the description of all the tools and these little bobbins if you're thinking about getting anything, buying any of the tools or anything that I use. Please buy through my links. They're all eBay links and there are UK and US links on there. You'll need a little crescent moon cab for this one. And this stone is quite unique. They come in all shapes and sizes. Mine is 32 millimeters by 10. I buy my crescent moons off a lady called Gail on Facebook. I'll put a link to her group in the description below. Her group is called Cabochon Cafe. So it's beautiful stone. And you'll need a little three millimeter bead. Tools, I've got pliers. I've got my Juron tweezer nose pliers. And then I use Tronix round nose pliers. I love these, they're the shorter ones. I've got my um, Razor Tronix cutters. They are lovely to work with. And I'll be using nylon pliers. If you're thinking of buying any of the tools, of the tools I use, all the links are in the description below, my affiliate links. So we're gonna start six and a half inches from the beginning of your wires so that's 16 and a half centimeters and i must apologize today for my dirty hands i've been gluing cords and i'm absolutely covered in glue and i can't get it off i will show you how to glue my, how you do the cords i will do a tutorial on the cords soon And we're going to start with three wraps around the bottom wire. And then we're going to wrap around the top wire. So go over the front and up between the two wires. So we've wrapped around the top wire. Over the top. Under the bottom wire and over the bottom wire. So that's our repeat. So we'll do that again. We're going to go around the top wire. So we go over the top and up between the two. Over the top wire. Under the bottom wire. Ooh, got myself tied up there and then around the bottom wire. So we go around the top wire, over the top wire, under the bottom wire, and around the bottom wire. 
So if you look at that weave, we've got a wrap around the both wires and then a wrap around each one next to it. So we need to keep repeating that. done about what's that two and a half inches at six and a half centimeters will flay well, depending on the size of your stone you'll need more or less and we can add more to this weave if we need to so right in the center of the weave we're going to start to bend that weave. So you've got a proper U shape like that. And then take your stone and to the back, we're going to position this U shape right in the middle. So it sits like that. And you want it to sit quite low down on the back. So it's not touching the bottom and it's further down than halfway. So we want it pretty central as well. And then hold it in place. We're going to take this weave, we're going to bend it around to the sides. So we've got that shape. So your weave needs to be long enough so that it comes over the edge. I might add a bit more to that side. That's what we've got so far. So I've added more repeats to that weave. I've also added more repeats to the beginning weave. I unwound the three that we started with on the single side, the three single wraps. And then I just added the wire to the other side and carried on with that weave. So now, holding onto the stone and pull it quite tight, we've got the wires coming down as opposed to going out. Need them to go out a little bit, but not much. So hold it all in place when you're happy with the position of it. And take your weave around like that. Do the same for the other side. You want to pull it nice and tight if you can. And bend it around to the back. Like that. So that's what we've got so far. I'm going to cut that tail end off there. So now we're going to carry on to bend the wires around again. So again, pulling on it and holding it all in place. So we've got it quite nice 
and tie it around the stone like that. And again on this side. So that's what we've got so far. Don't take your weaving wire. And I've cut mine off my bobbin now. I need about 80 centimetres start on this side and what we're going to do we're going to weave along both of these wires along the back so just going across these two wires to start with take your weaving wire and post it down the back so we're going around all four wires We're just holding all the wires together. Going around all four. And then I'll go around that second wire, the bottom wire, sorry. And then I'll go around all four again. This is just to hold it all in place. A little bit fiddly. And again, up, oh, shadowing myself there, over that bottom wire. So it just holds it all together there at the back. And then what we're going to do, continuing to weave over those two wires, continue to do three wraps around the bottom wire. And then three wraps around the two wires. And that's our repeat. Three wraps around the bottom wires. Three wraps around both wires and you need to repeat that ten times. So I've done my repeats, I've only done nine because I had to start it quite high up. I shall do ten on this side so the weave sits a little bit lower. So I'm going to bend that up. And it gets it out of the way a bit. For now, I'm going to work on this one. So cut another length 80 centimetres of weaving wire. And now we're going to weave across the other two wires. Bend that just out of the way a little bit. So we need to mirror this weave so that it looks right. So we need our three wraps to be on the inner wire. So take your weaving wire and we're going to start with three wraps around the top wire. And then take the 
each end of your wire and we're going to have to go around all four. Oh, hard to do this behind the camera, get myself all tied in a knot. So we're going to go around all four wires. I'm going to do this without the camera and then come back. Go around all four and then I'll come up and around that top wire. And then I'm going to go around all four again. And then go over that top wire again. You're just locking all the wires together really so they don't move around. So now we need to continue wrapping over that top wire until we've got three wraps. And then three wraps around the both wires. And that's our repeat. Three wraps around the top wire, three wraps around both wires, and we need to do ten repeats. So I've done ten repeats there. I can lose that tail end now. And as we did with the other one, we need to curve this one around. So that's the back. At the front, we want them to meet at the top, but we want them to curve so they meet like that. So that's what we've got so far. That's the front. And that's the back. So give it a good squeeze, make sure it's all nice and firm, tight around the stone. We are going to secure the stone like some more, a little bit later on in the pattern. So now I'm going to cut off both these wires because they're only short and I'm going to add my longer wire, weaving wire and we're going to weave across the middle two wires. So take the outer wires and we're just going to curve those out for now out the way. It's my dog woofing in her sleep. They do make funny sounds sometimes. So then wrap three times around the bottom wire. So we're just working over these middle two now. And then we wrap around both wires and that's our repeat as before three wraps around the single wire and then three wraps around both wire both wires and we'll repeat that about 12 times just over the middle two wires so I've done 12 repeats there Cut off that tail. So now holding it at the base here, I'm going to bend it over to the right. 
I'm going to curve the weave around to make a loop. Like that. And then take the next wire. I'm going to scoop that one around. And then you need to go find your three millimeter bead. Pop it onto that wire. and then hold it in place we're going to go round again go around the bead So now we've got all three wires going in the same direction. So now we'll weave across the three wires. I hope you can see what I'm doing, it is quite dark. So we're going to go around the bottom two twice, come up between the bottom two and then go around the top two twice and then go back around the bottom two twice then take this extra wire pushing it to the back I'm going to curve that one around to follow, to follow everything. I'll show you from the back. So now we've got all four wires going in the same direction. And we'll just add that wire to our little weave. So bring the wire underneath this now bottom wire and go around those two bottom wires coming up between those two bottom wires so now go around the middle two wires twice and come up between those middle two wires go around the top two wires twice coming up between the bottom two wires go around the middle two wires twice your wire underneath the bottom wire go around the bottom two wires twice come up between those bottom two wires so we're doing like a zigzag type weave and we'll repeat that again go around the middle two wires twice come up between those middle two wires around the top two and around the top two again coming up between the bottom two wires go around the middle two wires again so 
moving your wire underneath the bottom wire. We'll go around those bottom two wires. I've got two repeats of our zigzag weave. Hope you can see that okay. Continue weaving just across the bottom two wires. And we'll go three times around the bottom wire. And three times around both wires. And that's our repeat. So I've done eight repeats of that weave. You just need to weave until you, your weave starts to come over the bottom of the stone there. When you're happy with the amount of repeats, you're going to add more coils to the bottom wire. And then I'm going to cut the weaving wire, leaving a short tail. Because I'm going to curl that and I'll want to tie it down to something. So now keeping all the wires next to each other. We're going to curve the whole thing around like that. So we're putting a bit of a curve in the top there. And then lift your weave forwards a little and take the back two wires and we're going to shape them we're going to shape them pulling them over to this side kind of behind the weave a little bit pull them apart And bend them right over the bottom of the stone to the back. And we'll pull them apart a little bit more. a nice shape with the weave and it totally finishes off to secure that stone in place in a bit when we fix this on so what we're going to do is we're going to pop these wires underneath the weave and wrap them around the weave so they're a bit long at the minute it's going to be a bit tricky so we cut them off a little bit shorter just so we can handle them better I'm going to lift my weave away from the stone a little just to make it a bit easier and then I'm going to take these wires without shape, unshaping the front of the works too much I'm going to just pop it behind the weave and this one as well And go back to the front so we can look at the shaping. Do you want the wires to come down nice and straight apart at the bottom? And then you want a nice tight fit over the bottom of the stone, you don't want it loose. You want it to sit nice and flat against the stone. So I'm pushing my weave back onto the wires now as well. So now using my 
Dog's gone to sleep on my pliers. Got them. I'm going to bend them around the weave. Now I'm going to pull on it a bit because I want to lose the height here. I want them nice and tight. But you don't want to pull on them too much to misshape the wires at the front there. So that's just how I want it to be, like that. Just wrap them back around again and I shall squeeze them in place. So you can see it's all held in place and now the stone is completely trapped. I'm going to pull those wires apart a little bit more. I'm going to shape the weave to finish off the last two wires. Really, you can do what you want with it here to make it a bit more your own design. I'm going to shape it around. And then I'm going to bend it back across those two bare wires, like that. And I'm going to have one wire coming up. And I'm going to chop it off and curl it coming up there. And then this one, I'm going to scoop down and cut that and curl it going this way. So my coil has ended nicely next to that wire there. So I'm going to wrap the tail end of this wire around that wire there. Tie it down so it'll be nice and secured onto there. I'll go around there a few times. So it's definitely held on. Then I'll just carry on adding a few more coils. So I can snip that off. Sorry again for it being so dark today, but we're only in the dock for a few days, so it should all be back to normal next week. I'm going to cut that about there, I think. And I'll cut this one about here. Nearly finished now. Oh, and I forgot to mention we're going to need a jump ring for the top to pop around the top there so we can attach our cord. 
So you need to make a jump ring. I normally use 1.5 millimeter wire, which is 14 gauge. And I normally make them about 10 millimeter outside measurement. So you can fit your cords in there. So I'm gonna curl this one around. this one needs to come around this way And we're nearly done, we just need to add that jump ring, oxidise it. So I've made a little jump ring and I'm going to add it through all of those loops I think. So there we have it finished. I hope you found this tutorial easy to follow and you could see what I was doing. So we just need to oxidise it now. This is one I made yesterday and I've oxidised that one. If you want to oxidise your work as well, I did a little video on that um, using the liver of sulphur. It just brings out all those lovely dark tones, which is really tricky to see in this light, but it does look absolutely lovely. So thanks for watching. As I say, next week we'll be at the dock and it'll all be nice and quiet, back to normal with all the birds. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!